Um, it's been a very, very wild last two weeks, but I'm finally back in my room. Legit, have not been in these four walls in two weeks, and it feels very, very strange. But ladies and gentlemen, I thought, why not? To celebrate me uh, bottling locked in. That's right, I did lose. Sorry for the spoiler. If you've not watched the final, I will reveal all the truths, all the behind the scenes things you have never seen, things that didn't make the video, how people were, everything. I thought, you know what? Let's sit down, let's have a chat. And I'll tell you all about the truths of Locked In. So basically, I asked you guys on my Instagram for like loads of questions that you guys wanted to know. I will be brutally honest. Whatever you want to know, you are going to find out today. We've got a lot of questions to go through. So we'll just start with, did I meet Sugar Lips? All right, that's a nice wholesome one. And I can confirm, yes, as soon as I got out. And I believe everyone, like, you know, when you got evicted, you basically met the whole crew and all that. Yes, I did meet Sugar Lips. Yes, she is f***ing hot. Uh, but no, actually, she is, like, genuinely very, like, a very nice woman. Like, it's very weird because, I mean, a lot of people think she's, like, a robot. Like, you know, it's just a random, like, Siri voice. No. It is an actual human being. She does exist. She's a lovely woman. Um, but, I, you know, I'm not going to reveal anything about her appearance because I feel like it kind of ruins it. But let me just say it's not what I thought it would be. I'm acting like she's a, like an actual robot. She's a woman, all right? She is a woman. Someone asked what was like, you know, what was the sleep and like what was happening at night? And I didn't think this was going to go in, which it didn't. Basically, genuinely, every night we were causing mayhem. And I guess like we at the time we were like, oh my God, this is insane. This is so funny. Like this is a peak of comedy. And when you realistically, when you think back, it's like me throwing pillows. It's Fu getting some saucepans and just banging them together so we can't sleep. It's like really, really like 12 year old humor. But at the time we were like, oh my God, we are unbelievably funny. We well, are not. Sleeping was bad. Well, it's one thing not knowing the time, but when you're trying to sleep, like I genuinely, I could have slept 20 minutes. I could have slept 12 hours. I had absolutely no idea of the time until, ladies and gentlemen, that is right. Basically, so they were I, I, genuinely unbelievably strict on the time, like genuinely unbelievably, which I, I guess I kind of expected, but I'll get onto it later. Basically, the producers, the producers came in a lot more than I expected. Again, this will be something I speak about in a little while, but let me focus on the time thing. We had two ways of telling the time, right? So about a week in, like we went a week without knowing the time genuinely, which is a very, very weird thing. Like not knowing the time for a week really, really messes with your brain. One of the girls, when they were using the oven, noticed it had the time on it. So, you know, we had the time there. We thought, oh my God, we're, we're uh, Albert Einstein, you know, we are unbelievable. Uh, the next day, the producer came in and, and reset the, the clock. So we had no idea what the time was once again. But then I'm going to reveal a very, very big secret here. Basically, it was a weird house. Like, the layout was obviously so weird. I don't know, like, who's living in there past us for two weeks. I don't know, you know, I wouldn't want to live in there. But basically, there was a wall that was boarded up, but there was a little hole in the wall. And we basically squeezed through the hole and in we were inside the walls. No joke. We went inside of the walls and there was a little security system that had the time on it. So sorry for Asylum. For the last week, we knew exactly the time to the second. And even like, so I'll, bring, I'll move on to the producer point now. The producers were so strict, which like, Fair enough. I get it. Like, you know what I mean? This, I knew what we were signing up for. The producers actually came in more than I expected. Whether it was just... Oh, the, the, the obvious one is lunch break. Like, obviously, these are human beings. They need lunch break. So, basically, there was an hour a day where, like, no cameras are on because all the camera operators, everyone, they were all on lunch. And in that lunchtime, we had one person come in and basically just make sure we're not speaking. If, we, if I opened my mouth and spoke to someone, he'd be like, no, Danny, shut up. The cameras aren't on. Shut up. Do you know what I mean? Like content. You got to wait for content, which I personally wasn't expecting. I guess you kind of hear that in like Love Island and that though. So it's normal. It's normal in the industry, I guess. But one thing I will say is I didn't know how strict the rules were. So for example, let's say when, when it's lunch break, the cameras aren't on technically. I mean, you know, they're always recording, whatever, you know, but the cameras aren't technically on. None of it is making it in the video. When I was in prison, right, for like the 17th time, you know, look at me, I've got to rep it. But when I was in prison during lunch, they still, and I'm not joking, they still did not let me out 
And I thought, you know, so my first night in prison, I was like, oh, this is funny, you know, good content. They can get me being sad. And then I'll go back to my bedroom. Do you know what I mean? No, they made me sleep on this, the most uncomfortable thing ever. The pillow was awful. Like genuinely, I woke up, my neck was killing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was, an, I was a hamster. You know, I was literally a little guinea pig to these lot here. Even when the cameras are off, they, they were not allowing me out. Genuinely, I went to open the prison door. Sugar lips, Danny, you must return to prison immediately. I'm like, the cameras aren't even on. There was one day where I got like, not annoyed, but I got a little bit rattled because I'm like, mate, at the end of the day, it's not that deep. I get it. You know, I got myself in prison. I think it was after I ate the Nando's, which wasn't mine. So fair enough. I'll take it. I will sleep in it. But when the cameras are technically off, surely I'm allowed out. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, no. Because obviously they want to show just your good moments. Like they are showing the, the full true story. Kind of. I'll get to that. I think you could tell by like day 10, 11, I'm just kind of done. Like I'm not... I went into this not wanting to put on a character and I think I'd done that. Like, I just wanted to be myself and I think you guys can can back me up that I was myself. Like, by, you know, but, you know, the day one and two, I'm like throwing oranges, I'm buzzing, I'm having this. And then day 10, I'm just like, yeah, I'm done. Do you know what I mean? But I'm happy I, I was myself. Like, I, I just didn't want to like, oh, okay, right. God, go, you know, God, get up and smash it and, and, and shout and scream. I couldn't be asked. So, uh, you know, just to be completely honest with you, I'm like, I'm drained. I am drained. That's one thing I think Foot Asylum did a good job of not exactly hiding because you could obviously see it. You could see the emotions are there, but they made it look like everyone was loving, was loving life, which we, you know, it was, it was an experience. I'm so happy, like genuinely now I'm out. I'm so happy I did it, but oh my God. And I know it's like first world problems. Like, oh, Danny, you're, you're crying because you've got a roof over your head, free food, getting paid for it. I get it. I, it's a, it's, you know, I'm a, in a privileged position. I understand, but two weeks without seeing your loved ones and just seeing the same people every single day. I know everyone inside and out, which is lovely. It's great. Like I've made friends for life, but oh my God. They brought in guests was my favorite days. Do you know what I mean? Like when you could see someone from the real life world and you could interact with them. They were my favorite days. Oh, my I uh, was there any arguments that they didn't show is a very good question and yes there was kind of there wasn't any but between the housemates i think i can't lie we we were probably the most happiest like friendliest group of people ever like i don't remember in previous seasons people getting along this well and it was genuine like you know, I'm seeing the boys tomorrow. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm a I've actually made friends that I can I can look at for life. Um, so there wasn't actually any arguments between the housemates, but there was an argument between a certain someone and a special guest that happens to be Ginger. I'll be honest with you, it was bad. Basically, I'm I I'm sure you can tell. Like, I'm sure you know. Uh, Ginge has spoke about it quite a lot on his stream, which he's entitled to do so. But yeah, it was bad. Like basically, uh, Ginge came in, someone didn't know who he was, thought he was like uh, a producer, thought he was a nobody, which even that is like, I, I, in my opinion, right, what I always say to people on like content is you can never tell how people are when they, you know, talk to like content creators. You can really tell how someone is when they talk to like production or like, you know, like a cameraman. Like I can tell who you are once I see you speak to them. Uh, and someone for Angry Ginge was the producer. Things happened. And I, I, in the video, right, basically it was the last to leave the box. And, you know, Ginge came in. There was a little bit of an argument. At best, a minute argument in the video. Seven other people here. It's not all about you, Joyce. F me. Oh. Jesus f Christ. You're one of them, actually. Just so f***ing loud. Yappa, yappa, f***ing yappa. Have your moment. Have your 10 minutes. Lads, I am not lying. This is not a lie. I don't, like, you know, this is 100% truth. That argument went on for at least 10, 15 minutes and, like, it was getting juicy. Do you know what I mean? Like, it genuinely, 10, 15 minutes of just actual insults like obviously uh we know ginger's character or not not character but do you know what i mean we know he was doing it like he he was brought in to do it the same reason max kadar like people weren't happy with max's cameo but realistically he'd done his job he he was told come in you know stir some stuff up insult people that was his job he's done it well do you know what i mean same with ginge uh and yeah it did go a little bit 
left when people started arguing. But that was, I can genuinely say, that was the only argument that they didn't show. There was no arguments between the housemates. We were all calm. Perhaps a bit boring because they even made secret challenges to, you know, for Joyce and uh, George to start fake beef because I think they weren't expecting us to all get along. So that's, you know, I guess that's a silver lining, you know? Okay, a good question here, lads. But you notice when I was in prison, security came and made sure I was, like, staying in prison, which is, like, so weird, by the way, because there was two girls in prison. I think it was Ten and Shannon. They both got in prison, and they didn't have security outside their door. But anyway, the question is, is there security in the house at all times? And the answer is yes and no. So... There is security outside the house 24-7. And for whatever reason, if we need the security, they can come in. So yeah, technically they are there 24-7 no matter what. Uh, but I think the only time I saw one of them was when I was trying to escape the prison. And oh, just let them take right. you. Danny, this is not getting paid enough for this, Danny. Danny, yeah, come on. Danny. Danny. Oh, Oh, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> Someone asked a question, was there any access to digital items at all? Like, obviously, we know phones and that are no-go, which, by the way, like, I saw some people on Twitter saying, oh, they've obviously got their phones, they're posting on Instagram and that. They were like, the, you know, we got people to do that. We literally had no access to anything anything genuinely anything we weren't even allowed like a polaroid which i know like might sound stupid but we really wanted a polaroid to like take pictures and remember it we weren't allowed anything uh you know what i've got to answer this question because i'm sure lots of people are wondering it let's say this in a nice way did i uh do the thing how do i say this um did i work basically did i in the two weeks um, and i'm actually genuinely very happy to say i'm not joking i i genuinely did not do the thing in two weeks and the reason is like i can't lie i was very very frustrated very but like you know day 11 and 12 i was like <sighs> they supplied condoms like i'm like the first like i'm not even joking we got sat in the house and we got brief like oh guys so happy you're here here's what's gonna happen in the two weeks i'm not joking Within five minutes of us meeting each other, the producer was saying, hey, if you want, there's condoms upstairs. No word of a lie. That was that came out of his mouth. And I'm like, what have I got myself into? Um, but no, sorry, off topic. Um, I did not. Hey, man to man, I'll let you know I wanted to. At the end of the day, I was like, oh, you know what? Cool. End of the day, go to the bathroom, do my job. You know what I mean? But <laughs> this is so weird. Um, but I, I was genuine. I was just so tired. Like, I just couldn't be bothered. Like, proper first world problems. But at the end of the day, I was just like, nah, I can't do it. And I just went to sleep, to be honest with you. So at least I can say that. I went all two weeks without doing the deed. I'll take that. <laughs> and last but not least, boys, we have got how much of the show is scripted. Uh, and I actually came into this thinking, like, so basically I was told, like, oh, we might at times, if it gets a bit dead, we might tell you to talk to this person or whatever. But honestly, I can genuinely say not once in them two weeks did anybody come in and be like, guys, I want you to speak to you. I want you to say that. Genuinely, at no point in the show did anyone say anything like that. Everything you saw was, was completely natural. None of it was like... Guys, can you please do this? Can you do that? Everything we've done was, pretty, you know, but apart from the challenges and that, which are not scripted, but you know what I mean? Like they are instructed, I guess you can say, but chilling, you know, talking, everything, every conversation, everything outside the challenge area was 100% natural, just all, all ours, which I think is quite nice because I, I, I came in expecting it to be a little scripted. I don't know how, but yeah, I thought it was going to be a little bit, but literally was not at all. Boys, that was the truth about locked in. You know what? Uh, what number's on my shirt? 273,118. Let's get this many likes on today's video. Make sure you subscribe if you guys are new. I'm going to be doing a lot more like... Uh, I don't know how to explain. Basically, I love FIFA, yeah, but I'm going to like try and move away from it. Not all at once. I still want to play FIFA. We'll still be doing it when I can and when I want to, but... I do want to do some more, like, just me videos. Just, like, videos of me and not playing a game. So, if you want to see that, make sure you subscribe. And thanks for watching. Peace.